We recently sailed aboard the Quantum of the Seas round trip out of Seattle to Alaska. Today's video is going to take you on a little tour of that beautiful ship. Come along with me on the Quantum of the Seas. Decks three, four, and five are the main indoor hubs of activity on the ship. We're going to start down on deck two. At each elevator bank, there's a diagram of the deck. The red dot shows you where you currently are. Deck two does not have much. There are a couple of boarding areas, primarily used if the ship is not docked and guests are using tender boats to go from the ship to the shore. The medical center is also located here at the aft elevators. Speaking of aft elevators, a lot of ships will have a forward, mid, and aft elevator bank, but the Quantum of the Seas only has forward and aft. If you're looking at the diagram, the aft elevators are closer to mid than the forward ones are, so you can use that as a point of reference for the ship. Moving up to deck three and starting at the aft elevator bank, walking aft brings me to two of the main restaurants on board, Chic and Grand. There is another model of the ship diagram at the entrance, and the menu is posted here. I'm here early, so this is the breakfast menu. They opened the doors, so I will show you around. Chic to the left and grand to the right. This staircase is a great place to take your own group photos. Tables here were for 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. I was assigned to this dining room with a group I was traveling with. We had lots of friendly servers who occasionally put on a little show. Across the way is Chic, with different decor, but the same general seating capacity. The Chic and the Grand are the two dining rooms to which you will likely be assigned if you choose a fixed dining time when you book your cruise. If you need a restroom while you're in the dining room, go past the elevator banks and they are on the right. Continuing toward the front of the ship takes us to the casino. It is a large casino, opened when we are not in port. Operating hours are posted there, and there is a designated area for smoking in the casino. If you are sensitive to smoke or just want to avoid the crowded casino altogether, you can bypass it by walking down the corridor where the Ocean View staterooms are located. Continuing through the casino will take you to the music hall. From trivia to entertainment, and from dance classes to lecture series, this venue is used often throughout the cruise. On embarkation day, they hosted a new cruiser Q&A. The music hall is accessed easily from the forward elevator bank too. Deck four will look very similar to deck three as you exit the aft elevators because the other two main dining rooms are located here, the American Icon Grill and Silk. They have similar hostess stands, but the decor for each dining room is very different. Silk definitely has an Asian theme. And on our sailing, this was the dining room where breakfast was served. Across the way is the American Icon Grill. Definitely a different vibe than Silk. The American Icon Grill and the Silk Dining Room are most likely the dining rooms to which you'll be assigned if you choose My Time Dining. For Deck 4 Dining, if you need a restroom, as you exit the dining rooms, they are located to the left before the elevator. And walking forward from the dining rooms through the elevator banks takes you to the main hub of activity on the Royal Esplanade. Tucked away here is a kiosk for the Loyalty Ambassador. If you have any questions about your loyalty status with Royal or the perks of the program, you can ask there. Continuing on the Royal Esplanade, the beautiful spiral staircase where people like to get photos made, Across the way is the guest services desk where they will answer any questions you might have. To my left is Boleros. This is a lounge area featuring live music from time to time. This is also where they hosted the art talks and the art auctions on board. There are a couple of shops here. The Royal Caribbean shop has branded merchandise and the port merchants carries a few toiletries and necessities in the back of the store usually some items related to the itinerary. Kiosks in the center will often have sale promotions throughout the week. We were in Alaska, so there were some Alaskan items here. La Patisserie is where you can find specialty coffees, which are included in some of the drinks packages, but can also be purchased on an individual basis. They do serve Starbucks brand coffee here. 
They also have gourmet pastries here for an additional charge. Directly across from La Patisserie is the Cafe Promenade. Here the coffee is complimentary and is self-service. There is decaf and regular coffee, hot water for hot cocoa, and the large selection of teas. The display case is usually filled with complimentary pastries in the morning. Right now, while I'm filming, they have some self-service sandwiches and cookies available. There are self-service ice and filtered water dispensers and iced tea. This place can get really crowded in the mornings for the coffee. Next to Cafe Promenade is Sorrento's Pizza. Two of the freestyle soda machines are located here for you if you have sodas included in your drinks package. The Harp and Horn Pub has the English pub vibe. Throughout the week, there will be live music, often a guitarist, and frequently I saw people playing cards and other games at the tables here. There is a side exit which will lead you to more of the Esplanade where we find fine jewelry, luxury watches, and other high-end shopping opportunities. On the right ahead is an entrance to the upper floor of the music hall. These front row seats offer a pretty good view of whatever is going down below. And behind, there are some pool tables and lots of seating for small group conversations. Back out from the music hall is the forward elevator bank and the forward staircases, and to the right and to the left are entrances to the main floor of the theater. If I head to the right, there is an entrance to the crown lounge, this lounge is dedicated to guests who have a certain loyalty status with Royal Caribbean. Diamond loyalty or above gains access to this lounge. It's a cozy place to come and relax or socialize at posted times of the day. There's a concierge desk and complimentary continental breakfast in the morning, hors d'oeuvres in the evening, and fresh fruit all day. Complimentary coffees and cappuccinos are in this machine all day. The theater has two floors of seating. This is the view from the main floor here on Deck 4. Now we are ready for Deck 5, another major indoor hub of activity. On Decks 3 and 4, when you exited the aft elevators, you only had the dining rooms and the galley, but on Deck 5 there is a lot in the aft of the ship. Here the path is called the Via. Walking toward the aft of the ship from the aft elevators, there is an absolutely gorgeous chandelier sculpture and some seating. It's a good place to wait if you have reservations for Jamie's Italian Restaurant. This is one of the specialty restaurants aboard and can be booked at an extra cost. Vintages is a wine bar, but on sea days there would be board games available to borrow from here. Lining the hallway toward the aft are several meeting nooks for booking your next cruise. If you book your next cruise while on board your current cruise, they will usually offer some additional onboard credit along with whatever promotion Royal Caribbean is currently offering. There's a small art gallery to the left and pieces are changed out regularly. The tables and chairs are convenient for seating if you pick up food and drinks at the 270 Cafe. I also noticed several guests using these tables to play cards and board games. There's an interesting faceless head here too. 270 gets its name because of the 270 degree view from the back of the ship through these large aft view windows. There is raised seating for the cafe and lots of seating in the back, which is great for listening to music. Up that stairway is a small library with a few tables and some comfortable chairs. But if you're coming to see a major production show, most of the performance will be on this lower stage. This is the view of the seating while standing on the stage. This venue is home to one theater production called Starwater. Reservations are required. This venue is also home to Bingo for a Fee, The Captain's Talk, a towel folding class, and other programs. I am back at the aft elevator bank, but this time I will turn around and walk toward the forward of the ship. To the left is the shore excursions area. You can pre-book shore excursions before you ever arrive or on the ship after you board through the app or on these kiosks. There will be posted times where shore excursion staff members will be present to help. Next is the Bionic Bar where you can order a drink and robots will prepare it for you. You can look down onto the promenade below and Wonderland is across the way. Let's walk on over to the other side and check that out. Ship photographers will make good use of this chair during the week, but take your own photos here too. It's a neat prop. Wonderland is a small specialty restaurant with an Alice in Wonderland theme. If you're a foodie and enjoy a little culinary fun, this is a unique experience. Leaving Wonderland from Deck 5, there are a couple of tables with chairs for more promenade viewing and potential card games. The pathway will lead you to Izumi, the Japanese specialty restaurant.
Continuing forward, we are heading into the back side of the schooner bar. The schooner bar was home to lots of trivia, games, and crafts. To the left is the Focus Photo Gallery. If the ship photographers have made your picture during the sailing, you can view and potentially purchase it from one of the kiosks here. They have some photography equipment for sale as well, like the GoPro display, some memory cards, a few cameras, some unique photo frames, and binoculars. Leaving the photo area, we take a quick glance back at the schooner bar and see the entrance to Chop's Grill, the specialty restaurant steakhouse on board. This brings us to the forward elevator bank and the upper entrances to the Royal Theater. There are some designated spaces for wheelchair users and other handicap accessibility. This should give you a good idea of your view from the upper levels. Right now, they are using the theater as a meeting location for some shore excursions groups. There are exits to the outer promenade here on both sides by the theater. It's a great place to come get fresh air and to take photos of the scenery close to the water level. The starboard side of the promenade near the theater has the smoking section. Decks 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 are all passenger decks. Deck 11 has Adventure Ocean, which is the name for Royal Caribbean's Kids Club. Cute little sea creatures welcome your little ones down the hall. On the right is Royal Babies and Tots. This is an area where you can bring your babies and play with them. Aquanauts is the section for ages 3 to 5. This area is staffed and activities are planned for this age group during the cruise. Right now is registration and all of that is done upstairs. So let's head on up there. This is the Explorer's Room, dedicated to ages six through eight, where parents could pick up welcome guides and the schedule for the week as they registered their children for the kids club activities. The Voyager's Room is the dedicated space for activities for ages nine through 11. I think the best area up here is the Adventure Science Lab, where they have various science activities on the schedule for the kids. Deck 12 has a concierge lounge for sweet guests, and Deck 13 has the Conference Center. Before I show you around the Lido, let me take a moment to ask you to subscribe to my channel. I'm getting ever closer to that 1,000 subscribers mark where YouTube actually pays me for those ads that they throw into my videos and you watch. Uh, and I would love to actually get compensated for those ads. So if you find my content helpful in any way, if you will subscribe, that will really help me out. Now back to the ship. Royal Caribbean calls their buffet the wind jammer. Multiple food stations help to break up the lines. I'm walking through during breakfast hours, but they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. I found gluten-free, vegetarian, and vegan options at the wind jammer. The buffet stations are in the center and there is seating on both sides. Servers will come around to bring you drinks and to pick up used dishes, but there are also some self-service drink stations with complimentary ice, filtered water, iced tea, fruit juice at breakfast, hot tea and coffee all day. There is additional seating in the far aft. When the weather permits, the outdoor seating is wonderful. It is also a great place to come take photos of the aft views. Here is a self-serve beverage station at the beginning of the buffet, and it is right next to a specialty coffee station. So if you don't get your specialty coffee at the La Patisserie on Deck 5, you can get them up here at the Windjammer. Exiting the Windjammer and walking forward, you may come across the living room. This is actually one of the kids club areas on board, a space dedicated to teens. It is staffed and provides a good teen hangout. There's a pretty large selection of books and games and really inviting gaming nooks. Teens can check out video gaming equipment and play or just enjoy the view. There is a theater area, although I cannot imagine sitting on those seats for long periods of time. But they are teens, so they probably don't sit for long periods of time. Here's a quick overview of the Lido deck. In the foreground is the H2O zone, then the main pool and the North Star. I've headed outside on the Lido deck on the port side by the windows, and this is where the Lido smoking area is located. It is covered and a little protected from rain, but it is chilly out here. 
The automatic doors separate the outdoor pool from the covered pool, and my camera lens automatically fogged up, so I had to stop and clear the condensation. It is definitely much warmer in here when the cover is over the pool. Having a retractable roof is very handy on this ship as it moves from warm to cold climates. I am recording this very early in the morning so as to have a much quieter tour for you, but on scenic sailing days, this area gets very full of guests who want to view out these windows in a climate-controlled environment. From the covered pool, we make our way to the solarium, which is another covered area and is for adults only. From here, you can access the Solarium Bistro, which is a small complimentary food venue. Guests under 18 are welcome in the Solarium Bistro. There is a second entrance for the Solarium Bistro near the forward elevator banks. Lots of seating, some small pools, and some gorgeous forward views. I just exited the Solarium on the starboard side of the ship, back through the covered pool area, and back to the outdoor pool area. This is almost a mirror image of our walk down the port side, except there is not a smoking area on the starboard side of the Lido deck. This is a closer look at the pool and seating around it, the movie theater screen, and the hot tub. Some of the windows here on the Lido deck slide open for fresh air and unobstructed pictures, which was great for some unobstructed pictures I took this morning of the sunrise. I even caught a piece of a rainbow in this shot, and ahead is the noodle bar, which has a la carte pricing. Behind me here is the entrance to the Seaplex. Now the Seaplex is a wonderful place to come and be active here on the Quantum of the Seas. You can check the app or you can look at the cruise compass and find out when different things are scheduled to happen. Currently, they have open play for pickleball. They'll have pickleball tournaments later in the day. We have found basketball and archery. We have found dodgeball, bumper cars, laser tag, roller skating. All of this is free. They also have a lot of ping pong tables. They even have Xbox systems that you can check out and play complimentary. There is an arcade that has several different arcade games in it for a cost. Most everything was between $1.50 to $2.50 to play those arcade games. This is a great place to come and be active. There is a registration desk to check out equipment and sign up for activities. To play laser tag, the staff constructs this inflatable course. They work really hard setting up and taking down everything for the multiple events happening here throughout the week. On the upper floor of the Cplex, they have setups for cornhole and Jenga, bumper car storage, and multiple Xbox stations. Down below is the Cplex doghouse for hot dogs with all the toppings. There is a freestyle soda machine located here for those with the soda drink package. And there is a perfect spectator section right here. I came just to see how many people would show up to play adult dodgeball and was surprised at the popularity of this event. First, the staff made everyone warm up. They ran laps around the track, did squats, and lots of additional stretching. I felt like I was watching high school physical education. They divided up the group into teams and then the dodgeball tournament began. If you go outside of the Cplex on Deck 15, you can find the entrance to the Flow Rider and the sign-up area for Rip Cord I Fly, the skydiving simulator, which has an extra cost. If you plan to use the outdoor running track, three laps is a little more than a mile. And here's the rock climbing wall being guarded by the giant pink bear. The Flow Rider was open several times during our sailing in Alaska, just not at the time I was filming. Up the stairs as I fly, the instructor talks to the group and one at a time gets to participate. Anyone can come up and watch. On deck 15 forward, you can find the spa and fitness center. The spa has your usual rooms for massage and other spa treatments. The thermal spa with the heated loungers is an extra charge, but the fitness center is mostly complimentary. And it is huge and well used. Lots of treadmills, ellipticals, stationary bikes, and free weights. They have a few free classes in this area and some that come with a fee, but you can check your daily program to see. The Quantum is accurately named. This ship is Quantum in size and activities. This is Shirley with Shirley's Journeys, and I hope all of your journeys are pleasant ones. <coughs>